And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Among Nobles. Now, if you take a look at this box cover, this is one of those box covers that instantly goes into the pantheon of box covers, which are pretty bad. I mean, essentially, they just took some famous paintings of famous people, cropped the heads, and stuck them on the box. And they don't even look that interesting. It's like, ooh, do you want to play this? No, thank you. However, I know enough at this point in time to know that the cover, don't judge a book by its cover, don't judge a game by its cover, blah, blah, blah. Great. So I looked into the game, and the game is about having couples marry and have children, and ooh, I like that. I played a game like that from Portal called Legacy of the Duke de Clecci, and I, I thought that was cool there. I would love to try it here. I read through the rules. Yes! Let's take a look. There's going to be some provinces in the middle of the table. As the game progresses, players will be sending armies out to these. Whoever has the most armies in one will control it. And at the end of each round, you'll, if there's more than one army, you'll take out one of each until there's only one remaining. And that person's going to get prestige points, which is how you win the game, or, and or gold from controlling these different things. Each player is also going to start with a couple. There's starting couples in the game. Each of these couples are married. You put them together like this. And on a, at the top of the male person, there's a certain number of armies that they bring to the table. Players are also going to get a certain number of action discs on their turn. And each turn, you're going to be able to spend a certain number of actions. You spend one on the first. After that, you can spend all three of them. When you spend an action, you place it on a character, or if there's a couple, they work together, and then you pick one of the rows and do everything in that row. This row here is warfare. Uh, we'll ignore the second row for now. This symbol is warfare. That basically means you pay a gold and send one of your armies out to one of those province cards I showed you. This here simply gives you a point. This gives you money. This lets you marry off one of your kids. This row here allows you to have babies, girl, 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 or girl or boy. Now, when you choose to have a child, which is a good thing to do, you must pick someone who's the same color as one of the parents. All right, so I just showed you a red and green couple, so I can take any of these four. And again, if I, I have to pick the right gender, if I do pick a boy, I also have to pay a gold to be able to take that. So let's say I take this daughter here. So I will place her in front of me into a generational thing. This is the first generation. She's now part of the second generation. She also has a special ability on her. This special ability happens when she's born. So when she's born, I get two gold. I take that gold, and now I'm going to use her, and she might have special abilities that I could use, or hopefully she will get married off. Now, when you marry someone, let's say that I have this character here. He's also a child. Well, he's blue, so I won't be able to do it. Let's say a red one here and I want to marry this guy up. Now you can see this guy's pretty good. He's a double warfare row and different things in his row. These gray symbols here essentially let you do a warfare or piety or gold, but you have to pay two gold to take that action. And when he's born, you get a warfare action for free. Anyhow, um, when, if let's say I want to marry him, each other player can offer me, or if they have an unmarried daughter, they must offer them. And I can pick one. So I might pick her. Uh, but I like this one better because she has better rows, so I pick her. Now, when I pick her, you notice on her there's a church symbol. When she gets married, whoever is the owner of her when she gets married is going to get two gold and two points. They also, you always get two points when one of your daughters married off, so this person would get four points and two gold. I then have a pretty powerful couple here underneath here. Look at that row. I can have, I, I can fight twice and then basically take a merchant action and a have a daughter, or I can do different things. This star here is an intrigue action. It doesn't work in this situation, but some characters have intrigue actions that they can take, um, and when they take those intrigue actions, um, different, though, basically they have special abilities. Like, for example, this gentleman here has a special ability. For the remainder of this activation, this couple may give birth to children of any trait. Um, there are also people, like I said, there's people who have things when they're born. There are people who have special activities that go off when they're dead. When do characters die? 
Well, at the end of each turn, you're going to be refilling the row up here because people will be being born each turn. And when you're done with the level ones and going to level twos, at that point, there's going to be a slight readjustment and everyone in your top generation is going to die. And then your second generation moves to the top and you can have up to three generations at a time. And when they die, they just go away. But if they have a death power, like for example, this guy here gives you an army. When he dies, you get that. So essentially each turn you're going to be take some actions. You'll see who controls these, get those, and keep going. When everything's done, you will simply add up all the points that you've accumulated during the game. And there's lots of points and money here to have gotten. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, as I said, although the initial box cover put me off, I was, you know, I read the rules and I was like, wow. And I played the game and it was fun. And the fun disappeared. And I'll tell you why. Because the game itself, putting couples together, making power couples, okay, it's interesting. And I know that there's probably will be a big debate about the sexism and the whole thing, and it definitely is some sexism in the game. And that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it was at the time. Women just weren't as powerful and have as many actions as men. And that's an unfortunate thing, but that's, you know, depicted in the game. Although you can, you know, if you use women, right, you can, there's even a couple women who are fine by themselves. They don't need to be married, and I like that. Um, but anyhow, um, the, the game itself is interesting. It's like, ooh, I can build a power couple. And I love the idea of picking a row of actions. Like, ooh, I'll do that row, I'll do that row. The problem with that is, is that most of the time a row of actions isn't very interesting. To pay two army, two gold to use the army action, or two gold to get a point, gold is like really precious. So a lot of the actions are worthless. And most of the time, like, ooh, I can take army actions. Oh, I don't have any armies to put out. It just... <laughs> The game just feels like this slow slog, like I will do this. And you can also get trapped into the fact that you might not have anyone. You're like, oh, I have this couple and none of the kids out there match them. Oh, I finally got a kid, it's a daughter. Oh, someone married her. Okay, I got some points out of that. Oh, I want to buy a son, but I don't have any money. And it's, it feels like, I understand how the game is supposed to be and how it works, but the actual playing of the game is not that interesting. Sure. The idea of picking a row is great, and you can use an action to activate a guy again, but then you can only use the first icon in a row. I like that. The idea of taking daughters and marrying them off and trying to get together the right grouping, that's some cool, and I like the birthing special abilities and the death special abilities. And I don't know how to explain this. When I say all this, when I look at it, it sounds interesting, but the actual playing of it is a tedious affair. And that's, <laughs> controlling those provinces in the middle is boring. You're fighting over a point, a coin, a point and a coin. And you have to pay coins to put people out there. It's, it's this long, it feels like you're running on a treadmill in the game. And I'm tired of playing games that feel like you're running on a treadmill. I want games that are interesting and exciting. And I was really like, woo, oh, I can't wait to get to level three and see the rows there. The rows were better in level three, but they still were kind of not that interesting. And you might get a really cool couple, then they die. And it's, it's very possible this game to kind of fizzle out to nothing. If you're not careful, you lose everything and you can, you can get some people and start over again. But it's tough to recover from that. And you definitely don't want to marry a blue to a blue because because then you're tied to only blue children. And while that might be, a, it might sound cool, don't do that, that's a long dead end. Boring artwork, really a blah look overall. I can ignore these things. I can ignore these things if the theme is good. And the theme is good here. But the gameplay itself just doesn't give any excitement. And for that reason, I have to say to this one, nay. Dice Tower Judgment, bland, and not enough things to do. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Awesome! Boop! Boop!